In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion here at St Margaret's, and welcome back to those of you who are joining us online. It's marvellous to have people both physically and virtually in this service once again. So let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who art always more ready to hear than we to pray, and art wont to give more than either we desire or deserve, pour down upon us the abundance of thy mercy, forgiving us those things whereof our conscience is afraid, and giving us those things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the second epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, and beginning at the fourth verse. Such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Yet if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark beginning at the 31st verse. Glory be Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus, departing from the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, came unto the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bringing unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they besought him to put his hand upon him. And Jesus took him aside from the multitude, and put his fingers into his ears, and spit, and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and saith unto him, Ephphatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well, and he maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It must have been an extraordinary moment for that man that day to have heard that word translated on our English versions as be opened. They would, after all, or it would, after all, have been the first word that he had ever heard. We can only begin to imagine what he must have felt at that moment. Of course, the whole day spoke of the generosity of God which Jesus revealed again in this particular incident. And once again it was a Gentile who benefited from and was healed by the Jewish Messiah. Jesus knew and is recorded on several occasions as saying that he come primarily to God's chosen people, to the Jewish people. And yet again and again, he almost couldn't help himself, blessing and healing those who come to him who weren't part of God's chosen people, who weren't Jewish at all. Such was the man that day. And on top of his generosity, there was a clear hint about his identity for any who were alert enough to pick it up. To have healed this man as he did would have had additional significance in the light of what Isaiah had prophesied and which is recorded in Isaiah 35, where the blessings of the age to come were included, then shall the ears of the deaf be unstopped and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. These things were going to happen, Isaiah had prophesied, when God would come to save his people. And that day, those things happened at the hands of Jesus Christ. The fact that the local people, the Gentile population, had brought the man to Jesus, expecting him to heal him, indicates not only that his reputation had been spreading already, but also that they had had no doubt at all of the outcome of bringing their friend to Jesus. Their confidence in him and his generosity in response, together with that pointer to his identity for any who picked it up, are meant to encourage us in a greater boldness in what we ask of Jesus and expect of him when we bring people to him in prayer. I wonder how confident our own prayers for others are at this moment, how full of expectation we are that he will not only hear 
but answer our prayers. It's quite a challenge for the Tuesday after a bank holiday. And so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living ever God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee to save and defend the rulers of the nations and especially thy servant Charles our King that under him we may be godly and quietly governed. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all the clergy that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers in thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. 
provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to it life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great masses. We are not worthy so much as to gather out the crumbs under thy table, for thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy is give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is given for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. 
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the Apostles' teaching, united in prayer and in the breaking of the bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.